guts to get the, the, the guts to go back. But I walked up on a little hill there and had three of them just sprint at me. And I was expecting something because they told me to go there. But, but I was expecting, you know, a, a ship to come down real close or something like that. And my initial reaction was, you know, as much time as I'd even spent trying to learn about them, I ran and I cried. And half of it was tears of joy that they were uh, trusting me enough to show me their form. But, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's, uh, we're so primitive still, it's still terrifying for us. And, and I think we react violently real easy. So I think that's a lot of the reason why it's so secretive, a lot of the stuff they do. But, um. I think we wouldn't be so scared, you know, if they would give us some kind of like a warning, like, you know, okay. We're going to meet you tonight and be here at this location. <laughs> you know what's interesting is I actually get that now. And after that one experience, um, well, and I emailed you the sound that I recorded about a week ago that was interesting. Um, but, but yeah, I'll get, they'll warn me. They'll say, you know, telepathically real quick, beings on the ground or something like that. And which is always a little, you know, I wish they could point out where or, so, or something, but, but they actually approach me as animals now. It's very, very strange. It's kind of, they'll tell me, uh, you know, in about 10 minutes, here you'll run into it you'll, you'll see a deer and there it is and uh this last week i had one with i couldn't make out what it was it's i think i saw the outline of what was an owl it was a little ways away but i'd been driving around for an hour and then all of a sudden telepathically told all right pull over here and they'd been kind of prepping me for they always say beings on the ground and so so they're prepping me for that and then i hear this bizarre noise about 30 feet away just exactly where i knew to pull over but um, but yeah, I just I just always tell them to to approach me as animals now. But they had yeah they they did elk for a while, which have enormous horns, and it was mating season in the fall. So I asked them to do something different, and then they did a coyote, and I said, all right, guys, you got to do something a little less <laughs> scary for us down here. But uh, yeah. but yeah, it's interesting. Well, over uh, where you know they like to be, the hawks have been squawking. Like crazy, and you know somebody that grew up here thought that even thought that that's really strange that we don't hear them carry on. Right. And you could hear it in several of the videos that's around uh, September, October that I filmed over at that golf course. I mean, I have hawks flying over this valley though, so they do live around here. Sure, but why sure. they would squawk at night? Something I would think is bothering them to make them do so. You know what's funny is I have a dog and he, the poor guy, he goes nuts. He can he can smell them. It's funny. I've been in my room sometimes and the dog will come in and he just he can just sense they're in there and he'll actually walk up to him and and go to a specific spot. Once it was right uh, on the edge of the bed where I was sitting about five feet away from me and he would just go and he'd sniff it and he'd step back and look at it and sniff it again and then just he wouldn't leave the room for a while. It was interesting, but now, now when you uh, when you say that they're in a room with you, you can't see them to your eye, huh? No, no. I sometimes when I think a lot of people, uh, you know, the stuff you see in your peripheral vision. Um, what I, what I've heard that they do is that they somehow manage the way they keep invisible when it's not interdimensional and they're actually down here is they can time their movement to the movement of your eye. And the only thing the human eye can sense is motion. So as your eye moves, they adjust accordingly. And sometimes uh, if you turn your head real fast, you can see something move in the corner of your eye. Um, but no, when I'm, I mean, they'll, they'll take me often when I'm sleeping, but when I'm conscious, um, very rarely can I see them on the ground. There's been, I've seen a couple of little creatures that are clearly not of this earth, uh, clear as day in the time that they approached me, all three of them. And that is animals, but uh, often, no, I know they're there, and I can hear them. I, there's clicking and things like that, but I can't visually see them. But I've heard, I've heard that before, the clicking thing. Yeah, a, a clicking, and, and it was like a screeching sound I recorded about a week ago. And maybe I'll play that here. I'm still kind of debating whether to or not, because it is somewhat birdish. It, uh, it, but to me, it was just the fact I've been driving for an hour, and they said, pull over here, and there it is right across the street uh, in the middle of the woods. When you say they say pull over here, do you hear your own voice say it, or is it just a feeling? You know, uh, it's all it's all telepathy, which is really hard for a lot of people to understand because it, we, I mean, largely people don't understand it exists. You know, so a lot of people confuse it for their own thoughts. Um, but I've done so much of it that I've learned. Uh, you know, when a rogue thought comes in your mind, that's usually what it is. Um, but but yeah, it's it's hard to say. It's not. Uh, it's in a different voice. Yeah. All right. Let me let me ask you this. 
um, a lot of what I get into, because I get emails from all over the world from people who, um, and really their life story is similar to mine, and from what I've heard of yours, it sounds like similar to yours too, where we've just always been extra compassionate people and all that. And the, and the information I've had is that, that all of us are hybrids, and pretty much anybody who has a UFO experience is one, uh, but the memory race is so complete and all that that it's just it's not remembered. Um, of course, we're all womb-born and all that, but... Um, but anyway, point being, at a certain point, we seem to start experiencing this, and it becomes almost an obsession and really changes people's lives, and I know it did mine. So I was wanting to ask you, how has this changed your life from what it was before? Is everything different now? Or? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, before you go further, what you were saying about the mind erasal thing, um, it pretty much happened. I mean, every member of my family has seen... UFOs now, and in fact, I was one of the last one to get to see anything cool. I got to see a couple of things look like stars in the skies that disappear, kind of like the Phoenix light thing. Didn't last very long and stuff. But everybody that has seen them, it's like you, uh, it's an easy thing to forget. Like, how could you forget that? It's always a little fuzzy, isn't it? Um, well, it was at first. In fact, now even, well, I have so much footage now, they keep showing back back up and now that I know what their uh their MO is right and what to look for and to know they're in there and stuff and, and they're increased in number there's no leaves on the trees now so that makes it easier right but um I can't remember you know that I got this good footage on X date you know I mean, right some, some of the ones that people like and they'll remind me of you know I can remember those days but you know, everybody thinks that, well, I haven't seen a video from her. It's similar stuff. People need to come and check it out. <laughs> exactly. That's what I always figure, too. It's nice to put the videos up there, but at a certain point, you know, it's go go look up at the sky and ask to see them, and it works. But it, I, I don't know. I'm just lucky, or they tell me to look out the window, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's, uh, that's what I found, too, with the telepathy. Is It's, like I said, it's so easy to confuse for our own thoughts, so they kind of they'll whisper into your own head, in your own voice, you know, hey, maybe now is a good time to go take a picture, and then next thing you know, there they are. But, but, uh, well, but yeah, what are, the, what are the details on how, are, how are you, is your life different now than it was before? Is, I mean, how much time do you spend uh, doing what you do now with uh, UFOs? Um... Well, seeing as the increase all over the world, um, I, I have the unique opportunity at my location to not have to travel anywhere to study these things. So going from, you know, running a construction company and worrying about regular business things and gourmet cooking was my <laughs> other passion – um, to trying to figure out where these guys are from and what the heck they're doing here. I think it's a little more important, you know, because they're everywhere and they're flying over our heads, and I really want to know what the hell they're doing here. <laughs> I I do, too. I do, too. So, yeah, that's changed my life greatly because I spend the majority of my time uh, scouring the Internet Searching for other reports, I want to see how widespread it is, and it is more widespread every day when you read reports and you see something similar like orb-like UFO mimics aircraft reports in Texas, which is very hot, a similar activity that here in Colorado where you are. Right. Um, several states all over the place, California, Arizona, uh, North Carolina, yeah, it's there's interesting stuff going on, and, and from what I know, a lot of it is strongly related to uh, to 2012. That there's a ridiculous amount of bad information out about, but uh, essentially yeah. we're we're going through the galactic plane in the Milky Way, and there's a lot of gravity there, and there's a lot of uh, extra, you know, just debris and things as well, which accounts for a lot of these fireballs that we're seeing and stuff. But but yeah, it should only increase until uh, till that date, and then gradually decrease i strongly doubt it's going to be the end of the world so that's good news but you know really it's such a everything's cyclical but it's been twenty six thousand years since it happened the last time so it's you know the last we have really from twenty six thousand years ago is writings on caves saying something like seeds of stars awaken or something like that which is <laughs> a little there's a, yeah, there's a lot of new age uh 